Cheers, and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, we have guests. In case you don't remember who I am, I'm Mike. This is Drew. I'm Drew. Yeah, you see him, he's my oldest for taste testing. And Evan. Evan yeah, is doing. a very old friend of mine. He found me on YouTube and says, dude, what you doing? I'm like, brewing beer. He's like, no way. I brew beer too. <laughs> and he's all the way in Gainesville. I'm in Jacksonville. But I've been holding off inviting him for one tasting, but now we've got a big tasting. This is a big one. And I've got tons of good information, but I'm not gonna, you know, drown you in it, should we say? <laughs> but this is about the IPAs. I brewed 16 gallons of IPAs using the boil maker surface just to boil and use two anvils. It took technically a day and a half to get it all done. I blended all of them. So we had four, four gallon IPAs. And then I used Omega 404, Hophead from Mangrove Jack, which is M66. I use California 001 from White Labs Dry Yeast. Very, very, very happy with that right now. And White Labs 001 Liquid Yeast. And I wanna know what the differences are. What, I mean, I would never have thought about taking the dry and the liquid and comparing it, but White Labs did it recently, so I'm curious, and I didn't wanna to drive to Asheville to find out what the difference was. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a trip. Yeah. It's a long trip, it's a great place, but it's a long trip. So that's what this video is all about. We're going to tell you what the difference is that we see, taste, and perceive. Now, for some details, and before that, like, subscribe, and if you haven't hit subscribe, it costs you nothing, come on. You're awesome, thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, kill that thing. So we're gonna pour probably about a half a pint of each. I don't wanna go crazy and you know, we're walking around here drunk out of our mind because yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what they started. They all started at 1.064 and to make sure all four were the same, I literally blended everything so that I had every single beer was identical and it was a lot of hot matter. I mean, a crazy amount of hot matter because of the, the, you saw it, the whirlpooling, it was insane. I don't even remember what it was. I want to say it was five ounces, but I'm looking back at the recipe and it's looking like it was almost seven ounces of Whirlpool hops, six in the mash. And then on top of that, I dry hopped with another four, maybe five, but I, I remember four off the top of my head. And what did we dry hop with? Well, we dry hopped with one ounce of Galaxy, one ounce of Citra, and then we did Lupomax. I did a Lupomax Chinook and a Lupomax Azaka. And yeah, and that was for five days. Everything fermented at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything got dry hopped for exactly five days. Everything was fermented without pressure on a glycol system to control the temps. So I treated everything as identical as possible. I did check the beers last night. They're not, some are carbonated, some are close, but they all have plenty of carbonation for taste testing. Um, and just so I don't waste any more time, we're gonna go into this. And before I do, because I almost forgot, Original gravity was 1.064, final gravity, final gravity. And understand, this was 75% Pilsner, 25% corn flaked. There was no real sugar added to this, and our FG was 1.007 on all but one. Hophead, ale use from Mangrove Jacks, took off, it was almost done fermenting before the rest were halfway done, and it ended at 1.006. Now keep in mind, I think I was sitting around 1.010, 1.011 on most of them until the dry hopping finished. So I have a feeling it's the Lupomax or one of the Lupomax that kind of got the fermenting going again and caused it to really go crazy. I don't know. I would have to do a lot more experiments because I get I get better dry or better final gravities than when I add sugar. That was crazy. I mean, that's very low. That leaves us at 7.6% for all the beers, except for the mangrove jack at 7.7%. So these are big, they're hazy. I did not brew them to be hazies, but they're hazy because of all the yeast, or all the, not yeast, the, the hops. hops. Thank yeah. you. My brain's moving a million miles a minute. We're gonna literally take a few minutes to fill up these glasses and it'll seem like a fraction of a second for you. So here we go. Okay, as you can see from the pretty glasses, some are very hazy, some are not as hazy. So some are not see through at all, yeah. right? <laughs> I was gonna say some are almost <laughs> light and then some look like we poured a bunch of thick juice, pure juice. <laughs> um, my goal here was to do a thialized beer on every aspect except for three of the yeasts. So that's the only thialized. And my theory is that in the comparison, we will see what this brings to the table because it's only bringing a little bit more to the table than the other ones supposedly with the exception of, if anybody knows what the enzymes are in mangrove jacks, let me know. It says it's supposed to help with hops. Um, 
But yeah, uh, do you really need dialyzed yeast to make a great IPA of whatever style? I'm going to let them lead and we'll start with Star Party. I know my smells right off the bat of what I smell on this one. And I'm the only person who's tried any of these beforehand. Okay, sorry, I had to reset because we just went through all four of them. <laughs> right. They, were, they were smelling them while I was pouring them. Go ahead, Drew. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, but you're right. A lot more tropical in the, yeah. in the smell. What I smell is I smell a light grapefruit and then a tropical background, like a lot of tropical with a little bit of grapefruit in there. Now see, I'm not really picking up on the grapefruit as much. I'm really getting the tropical, quite a bit of pineapple, I think, but also- Whoa. Get... <laughs> there it is. There's the pineapple when you taste it. I'm getting a little bit of like pear on the background, maybe. I could say pear or some sort of a or orchard fruit. Yeah. Like a, I am, I'm like, I like pear, so. And I can't taste apple, so it's gotta be pear or something like it. Ooh. Oh, that's got a lot of interesting things going on there. So I definitely get that, that kind of pineapple acidity in there. Uh, but then the bitterness kind of cuts through that. It does, and it's only supposed to be around 60 IBU if I remember right, but um, it's got it, some bitterness. It drinks a little more bitter, but in the now I'm, more, taste, I'm getting more of the, the grapefruit you're talking about now, because I always notice grapefruits taste bitter to me. Yes. And that's part of what I'm tasting here. And weirdly enough, it finishes almost slightly salty. You getting that? I get a little tang. And I kind of, I'm thinking it's more the pineapple and grapefruit taste, but Maybe. I didn't smell pineapple. And as I took a sip and they were saying it, that's all I could taste I mean, is pineapple I mean, initially. To me up front, I'm not getting like any of the bitter um, until it's washed right. through the palate. Comes right through the yeah. back. And, and opposite of you, I really smell the pineapple, but I taste more of the grapefruit. And as I say, poisoning the tree, as he talks grapefruit, I taste more of it. More in the finish than the beginning. It is good though. The pineapple finishes, hit me in the face. It finishes nice and dry. Yeah, I think nice it needs. I think it'd be better in like a few more days too. Once the carbonation's a little more. Well, yeah. it's looking pretty good now. But last night it wasn't quite there, and I was, I had a leak in one of my caps, so I had to swap caps and pray for the best because you know Evan was already coming here, and I wanted to make sure it was ready for him. I still get that just that last little second as the dryness is evaporating off the palate. I get this tiny little bit of saltiness. I'm letting it sit down. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. It's not like exactly like taking some sea salt and putting it in your mouth or whatever. No, but it's, it's just like, like the residual behind yeah. is a little exactly. bit salty. To me, yeah. to me, it's more, I could taste a hint of salt, but it's more, if I had to say pineapple rind. Yeah. Or not pineapple yeah. rind, I'm sorry, grapefruit rind, but the yeah, pineapple's still rind. there too. Right. The pineapple, that, that... the pineapple I smell, the grapefruit I taste, and then you're all talking about the bitter, and I think bitter, and I think grapefruit, and I taste the rind of the grapefruit. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I mean, yeah. I love grapefruit, so. <laughs> We good for the second one? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Star Party did a great job. Oh, we got water here, forgot about that. Yep. Drew always reminds me. So this is Hophead Ale Yeast. I was dying to brew with this for a while now, but it's Mangrove Jack's M66. It was a beast. It fermented the lowest for final gravity, putting it at 7.7 .7 instead of 7.6, and it literally was done almost before most of them were halfway done. Okay, I already have an issue, but. How do you reset your nose? So, <laughs> right? Take a sip of this. Actually, if you uh, keep coffee grounds around, they do that at like yeah, cosmetics yeah. counters for perfumes, it'll really clear it out. Okay, that did help a little. I, we don't have coffee grounds, so just something yeah. that's starkly different helps mm -hmm. a little bit. I'm gonna say the aroma is much more mild. It is mild. Oh, much, much, much more mild. I get the tropical, but it's more of a, a hint now than the big explosion. I'm also getting a little more of that kind of orchard fruit, a little pear kind of flavor, smell to it. Maybe even a tiny bit of stone fruit. I'm not sure. Stone fruit I can smell. Yeah. I couldn't. I can't tell the smell, little, almost, smells apart because they're so more mild. Almost a little of like a peach. Yes. In the background. When I think yeah. stone fruit, I think yeah. peach first, and peach would be where I would go. That I would agree with. I was trying to nail what fruit it was, but yeah. Okay, I got one issue right off the bat and I like it. Kind of tastes a little peachy. It has a little bit of peach taste, peach smell, very mild, but it's smoother. Yeah, much. Much smoother yeah, than what? Much. The tropical party. is a little, it doesn't have that 
acid bite that makes you think of the grapefruit. Yeah, there's you know, no um, grapefruit rind left in my mouth. <laughs> the bitterness is coming through the back end again where it's not bitter and all of a sudden it but is. But smooth. But in a real pleasant yeah, sort of way. Yeah, it's a lower, it's not like, oh, now it's A little more complex flavor too. Those, coating. those, I think those different fruity flavors are sort of dancing together a little better. This is at 7.7%, but this to me so far compared to only two out of four, Yeah, I could drink this smooth. Uh -huh. like, like just keep drinking it until I realize I shouldn't have. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's That's good stuff, man. And it definitely feels, doesn't feel like a 7.7% .7 beer at no. all. No, I got another packet of this. I think I'll be using it soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to pick some up. That's good. That is really nice. I think I, I don't even think I got that local. I think I threw that in some cart one time just to make sure I got my numbers to get my free shipping. <laughs> you get some cool things that way sometimes. Right? <laughs> nice surprise. Okay, now we're moving on to White Lab 001. Which I was also impressed with. It fermented really well, not nearly well, as well as the Hophead. That certainly is a workhorse. Been using that for years and years. I, I preferred 005 for a long time, or five, no, five one, five one, which was based on one. Gotcha. And it had a little more citrus in it, but I've moved over to 001 as a preference because I don't like some of the things the 051 brings to the table sometimes. It's not as clean as 001. And 001 is known for subduing malts and bringing out the hops. And that's why I also did this as a cold IPA to a degree. That's why I used Instead of a West Coast, I kept the caramels out. I kept it very simple so the hops could shine. This was all about the hops. A little bit of a caramel smell to this. I, you know, it was There's about no caramel the in here. Thing. There's a little bit of a sweetness a there. It makes me think of whereas that made me think like pineapple juice, acidic. This makes me think like of a pineapple pastry or something. You're right. It has, it has almost a, a pastry taste type of pineapple smell to it. It smells like a sweet pineapple, but it's mm -hmm. also very, I do could see where you could get a hint of caramel. Mm -hmm. There are no caramel in here. No, no caramels yeah, were harmed. You can, you in can this actually taste like it. You can smell a little bit of sweetness on the on the on the aroma there. And for anybody who wants to, you know, comment about me using two hands, my hands shake, and today they seem to be bothering me more than usual. Won't come to age, although it's been my whole life. Okay. There's no, I, there's no lasting bitter with this one so far. Not as much. No, I don't get it. I get a little bit, but not nearly as much. I get much. some, just not as much. I get almost no tropical flavor. The aroma is stronger I in this than this. So generalized kind of fruity flavor. Hard to put my finger on, but not real tropical and very almost round. I don't really taste sweetness yeah. like yeah. I'm smelling, but I get a round. So taste. far, before we get to the fourth one, number one in aroma to me, number two in aroma, number three in aroma, but very smooth. More bitter than this, but not as bitter as that. And the flavor is a little more subdued. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, in order of bitterness for me, at least it's going down as we go. Hmm. But I like the smell of this one. Like I so actually bad. thought this was a little higher on the bitterness in general, but it didn't have that kind of sweep in from the back bitterness. No, it didn't have the bite. It was, I think it that's was what's bothering me. It was the, like there from, yeah. from the beginning. And keep in mind, don't know if Evan, but me and Drew miss Palette Wrecker. We used to drink that a lot. <laughs> hey, I'm all about the IPAs. Yeah. It's all day, every yeah, day. It's man. like, was it theoretical, 100 or 200? Yeah. Something like stupid. Something. Yeah. And you can ask my wife, say, do you ever drink anything but IPAs? <laughs> well, yeah, occasionally. <laughs> I like to shock the liver and have some water. You know, when I first started tasting this, I wasn't sure if I liked it as much, but the more I taste of it, the more I appreciate kind of, it's a little more complex. Uh, and there's some flavors that kind of make you chase them down. It's smooth, but it's got a lot going on. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. punching you with one particular flavor. I taste pineapple. I definitely get pineapple. I'm getting a little get more a little, of it as I get into it. I get a little more grapefruit over time, but it's mild, very mild. I can see that. It's there. It's just very mild. I like the lingering bitterness on this one. It, it, it does it linger. It starts and it lasts. It's lingering on the sides of my mouth instead of in the back. <laughs> it usually lingers in the back. Might be the way I'm swirling it around my palate, oh, though. Yeah. Mm. I like that. That's good. I'm still thinking, though, the mangrove, 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 whatever, the <laughs> to be, jack. To be honest, M66. after one of each of these, you could give me both, and I wouldn't know which one's which, probably. probably. But yeah. this was smoother. This is very smooth, though. This is not bad. It's just, it's not as smooth. It's got that real aggressive grapefruit towards the end. Yeah. But the aroma is amazing. Okay, let's move on to the one that looks like grapefruit juice. This I'm, is the one I'm I might be in. tricking them. It's just grapefruit juice. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. I'd love to say that because that'd been easier than brewing it. It does smell like grapefruit juice, so. It I does. Get, I get kind of just a little hint of a. There's something else going on though. Like almost a fusel alcohol. Like like almost like a, just the tiniest hint of like an acetone to it. Anybody that. noticing that? I get the alcohol smell, a hint. This one did finish 
fermenting last and it wasn't necessarily its fault. I screwed up with a pump on the glycol and was trying to freeze it twice. So I had to repitch the yeast. So, and it did get five days of hops after the other three were already cold crashing and carbonating. So it was a little behind by so, about three, three and a half days. You wanna hear something weird when I'm suddenly picking up? So you've, you've had kids, you feed them baby food when they were little? Mm -hmm. Do you ever get the strained plums? Not I'm that I remember. I'm smelling that. This strained one's, plums. This baby one's 27, food. the other one's 21. Yeah. It's been a long time. Maybe yeah, they had a made. very distinctive, and I always thought a pleasant scent. Yeah. Uh, but I smell a little bit of like a stone fruit plum kind of smell to it. Poisoning the tree, I might see it, but I'm not sure yet. I could see he was a little picky. His, his younger brother still eats like a five year old. I'm still kind of sitting on that acetone grapefruit. So the acetone smell translates to the flavor, but not in a bad way. Yeah. There's something very... It's in a questionable way to me. It's almost like a fermented grapefruit juice, which I've had recently by accident. Well, not by accident. I knew it was fermented, but I it, I didn't mean to let it ferment, and I drank some and... Woo. Yeah, there's a little something unusual going on there. Yeah. There's a lot of yeast in here because of my fault. That was my fault. Um, so maybe I'll have to redo the White Lab dry and liquid, but... I'm impressed with the dry. I like the convenience of the dry. It is so incredibly clean. Um, I just don't understand why this one is so foggy. Well, I'm thinking something that contributed to that also contributed to why the flavor is, is significant. These are similar. This is, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> yes, these are similar, <laughs> but these two, Mangrove Jacks and White Lab 001 dry are extremely similar. Oh yeah. They're yeah, the yeah. closest both in clarity and taste. Um, if I didn't go crazy with the hops, they would have been much clearer. It might have been a very clear beer, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to compare, does this really bring a lot to the table? And at least from my senses personally, I'm gonna let everybody else chime in. I think aroma, without a doubt, probably brought the majority of the aroma that I smelled over any other yeast. Smoothness and drinkability, uh, Mangrove Jacks and White Lab 001, I mean, and this one, we'll just chalk it up to, I had a, a bad day with my yeast and my fermentation. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like this one the most. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink juice a lot, and this is kinda like just drinking juice. You're just gonna get drunk on the juice and not know <laughs> you were getting drunk until you drank too much juice. Right. Hey, you wanna try my really strong juice? Right. Hey, how you feeling? <laughs> I have to say, I definitely agree with you. This one is, is aroma-wise, the bomb. I mean, it really just punches really through. Good. And its flavor is more intense. It is, very intense. You'd have to like it, if you like it, I mean, it's great, and I'm really getting more of the grapefruit this time when I'm trying back on them. This might be your good starter when you're at the restaurant, and then you order this as your second because <laughs> you'll be able to smell this over these and you enjoy it because it's a little, it tastes stronger, even though it's technically 0.1% lower ABV mm -hmm. than the Mango it does. Jacks. It does. This would be my personal stock. <laughs> we I'll take a gallon. Go ahead. You can take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all the mangroves. Several gallons. That's my, mangroves. That's my favorite. I'm, yeah. I'm liking that. Uh, it's gonna be hard between Mangrove Jacks and 001, but I would say the Mangrove Jacks would be the winner for me, this is personal. Like second time around. It is. Yeah. It, <laughs> it is. Which actually. one are you on? Back to the, the first, first one, yeah. yeah. I'm almost done with I the first. I haven't gone back, so. <laughs> what was that about the first? <laughs> After having drunk the other first ones, finish. it actually tastes better the second time it's very after. it's a little smoother after the palate has been numbed a little bit a little bit you're right yeah it, it was a little in your face it had a lot going on i mean the pineapple which i didn't notice at first i noticed the grapefruit and a little bit of tropical maybe some passion fruit in the background but then as evan was saying hey i smell pineapple and i'm taking a sip all i could taste was pineapple followed by grapefruit and then i got a little bit of the rind and the rind was a little dry and a little bitter but i like grapefruit so i'm okay with it <laughs> all right now someone's messing my tongue i don't know what's going on anymore that tastes like cough syrup there. Well, yes. <laughs> it's four different IPAs. It yeah. really kind of just yeah. tears that palate up. It destroyed it. Okay, yeah, we used to drink Palate Wrecker and eat crazy hot wings that called suicide wings that I kind of helped kind of invent at a restaurant called Kickbacks. Kickbacks Ooh, which, I love that place. Yeah, they've that changed the recipe. Nice. I can't eat that spicy food anymore, but you can't taste any beer with those wings unless it's a really high bitter, and the bitter helps to yeah, clean the palate. It's got to cut through. The wings were so crazy hot. Last time I had them, I had half of them. Felt like I was breathing fire and I had to leave and I just couldn't take it anymore. I was sneezing fire. Yeah, they, had, <laughs> they had a fantastic menu over there. They, they do. Had probably the best Bavarian beer cheese pretzel I've ever had. Well, and they have like something like over 200 beers on tap. It's they insane. Do. They do. And they don't discount anything. But no, hey. They don't. 
I'm gonna say cheers. I appreciate you joining us. Don't forget, like, subscribe. If you have a question, a comment, let me know. Yeah. If you've tried, especially if you've tried this, yeah, Hophead, let me know, because I don't know anybody who's tried this yet. Um, if you've done a comparison with uh, thialized yeast, which, to be honest, I love Star Party, but I like their Lunar Crush, the lager version, even mm -hmm. more, um, which I didn't think would do as well, but it really did great, and I should have put it in this lineup, but I wanted to keep everything even as close as possible. That's why I kept the 68 degrees. And then the dry yeast came out great. We're gonna chalk the liquid up to, well, blame me. He likes it, so it's, anyway, so. it's all good. <laughs> but cheers, thank you, I appreciate it. I'm very happy Evan was able to join us. Drew was actually awake by 2 p.m. today. It was kind of cool. He normally <laughs> sleeps till five on weekends, but hey. The 10, thank you. Okay. It's pretty good. Quite impressive. Probably the cat woke him up. Cheers. She did. Thank right, you. Thank you. <laughs>